We're back on the dusty dirt track on my way to Burketown. With it late into the dry season, a lot of river crossings are very dry, but the Calvert River, which is approximately 170 kilometres southeast of Borula, is one to be noted. It's not that big now, but can be dangerous as the crossing is particularly rough with plenty of boulders and can get quite deep through the middle. Any water crossing can be dangerous. Always take it easy on shallow or deep rocky crossings as you definitely don't want your vehicle anchored in the river or severely damaged. A long drive, we come along several places of interest. I'd love the time to stop off at them all, but not this time. I have to leave something for you to discover. We do stop off though at Butterfly Springs. Now this is called an oasis in the middle of the Gulf Country. Now it shouldn't be bypassed. While it's nice, but I'd rather it full of water and the waterfall flowing. But if that was happening, we probably wouldn't be able to drive in here anyway, as the roads would be flooded. This beautiful water hole stays wet well into the dry season, but at the right time of year, you will be swimming in a clear, sandy bottom pool. For me, I'm out of luck, so we're back on the road. A few more dry river crossings and a look at why this area is so special, you have to love the Australian cattle. They roam the harsh, arid landscape with no boundaries, popping up all over the place. This is why it's just an eye-opening experience. Hundreds of kilometres from a set of traffic lights or a kid's school crossing. Out here, you're slowing down and giving the right away to thousands of cows, thousands of head of cattle with no boundaries. This trip, as I've mentioned, is like a choose your own adventure. We pull over to have a look at Hell's Gate. These are those special places you need to add in time for while you are traveling anywhere in Australia. Hell's Gate is an impressive site of unusual rock formations that run right along the side of the Savannah Way. This is well worth taking a couple of minutes of detour time to drive through such an Australian special spot. Back on the road, and it's the second border crossing of my trip. When you drive the whole Savannah Way from Broome to Cairns, you'll cross a couple of borders. Of course, the first one being Western Australia into Northern Territory, the second one being Northern Territory into Queensland. And I have traveled for days and days on dirt tracks to finally get to Queensland, and they dish up a sign like this. But we do know Queensland is famous for quite a few things. One being Forex, the other being cane toads. So my next stop is the Burketown Tavern to have a Forex with a couple of cane toads. The old country pubs through this area can tell a tale or two. On the 22nd of March 2012, the 92 year old pub was destroyed in an early morning fire. So today, it's a new look pub in town. It sells the same stuff, but hasn't got the decades of vintage Aussie outback stories. Something I'm sure will grow again over generations. Now I'm settled in for the long afternoon. I often say it and I truly believe it, the early bird catches the worm. So I jump up early and find out everything I need to know about Burketown by chatting to the Burketown caravan park owners, Jake and Jasmine. How would you sum up this area? One of those sort of last remaining outback areas. Yeah. You've got your savannah grass plains. You've got your river fishing, lovely estuaries everywhere. Um, and then for those that like to get out to do some reef fishing, we've got the islands just off the coast, which are absolutely fantastic. Just on the Savannah Way, uh, yeah, a lot of it now is bitumen. What it's done is that little extra bitumen has created more and more than is traveling it now. Because I think a lot of them that were a little bit frightened of, of that extra yeah, Mount dirt, you know, that a little bit unknown. This yeah. area, uh, as you say, it's rich in fishing. They call it the Barra Capital. For every ten barra you get, you'll get three over a metre. Oh, really? Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. And the caravan park itself, you have a lot of people that uh, continually come back every year. They yes. just book in, yeah, uh, you know, this week or this two weeks or this three weeks yes. every year. Uh, sometimes three months. Few, three months. Oh, sometimes. really? Yeah. yeah. And they book as they leave. They come in and then they book for next year. And also your cabins as well? Yeah. Yeah, rooms and cabins, there's 21 in all, just a yeah. mixture of different configurations. Yeah. Mainly, as you can see, you've stayed on the yeah. design mainly for people, fishermen really. Yeah. Uh, we, we do get solicitors and that, that stay here, that, that come through and represent 
you know, the local community. Local group and community. Basically, more so designed for, for guys that come up and you'll get three or four blokes in a, in a cabin and they can put their boats in beside it and everything, so that keeps them happy. The oldest settlement in the Gulf, boasting a rugged frontier history of Gulf feeder, is Burketown. By the mid 1860s, several cattle stations had been founded inland from the present site of Burketown. Now, Burketown prides itself on its fishing potential, being nicknamed the Barrack Capital of Australia. We travelled this far, so it would be rude and stupid of us not to try our luck at getting a barra. We are shown the way to a few fishing spots by half local, half traveller, Donnie. It's a short drive out of town, and before we know it, with a few prawns, we are trying our best. Barramundi, black brim, salmon, it doesn't matter. I just wanted a fish. Donnie tells us the water temperature is a little cold for consistent fish. But that wasn't our concern, because you know what they say, if you haven't got a line in, you can't catch a fish. Suddenly, then it's on. I'm on. Donnie's saying it's going to be a bloody catfish. No way, not this one. I'm on. I'm on. It's not massive. But it could be a brim, salmon, barramundi even. Yep. Donnie, you're correct. A bloody catfish. One thing we know about the top end is that there are crocodiles in most of the waters, so be very, very careful. As you can see, there's one just going down the middle of the river right now. Okay, it was a false alarm. That might have been a wooden croc, but I can guarantee you there are crocs in this water. They've already taken four of my barramundi. Then it's on. I'm on. Suddenly, I'm on again. Donnie again. It'll be a bloody catfish. No way, not this time. Brim. Salmon, maybe just a small barramundi. Yep, Donnie, you're right, another bloody catfish. But fishing these waters requires a lot of safety. Just because you don't catch one, don't stress, you can still eat one. The local Burketown Bakery and Butcher. I look at the roadkill selection of sausages, but I do want, and as traveling through the top end, several travelers gave me one tip and that was, you have to have a barra pie from the Burketown Bakery, and that is a must. You don't have to tell me twice, and I agree. Who cares if you don't catch a fish? The Great Australian Doorstep.